The cranial nerve exam includes various assessments, including tests of smell, vision, ocular motility, sensation in the face and eyes, head and neck muscles, hearing, and vestibular function. Whenever possible, test and compare both sides. Most of the cranial nerve examination can be done with the patient sitting. To test smell, mediated by cranial nerve 1, have the patient occlude one nostril, close her eyes, and identify a substance that you hold under the open nostril. Coffee. Test the other side with another substance. Use substances that have clear, distinct odors. Common substances used are coffee, soap. mint, wintergreen, and soap. To assess vision, cranial nerve number 2, Test visual acuity, color vision, and visual fields in each eye separately. To assess visual acuity at the bedside, use a handheld chart or device. If available, you also can use a wall chart, such as the Snellen chart. In both cases, it's important to have the stimulus at the recommended distance from the patient. Have the patient cover one eye and read line by line from the top until she makes an error. Test color vision using a color test plate, either printed or on a handheld device. Test visual fields by confrontation. You and the patient both cover one eye and yes. look at each other's nose. Tell the yes. patient not to look away from your nose. Yes. Then move your finger or another object yes. from the periphery where it can't be seen into both of your visual fields. Ask the patient to say when the object becomes visible. Yes. If her visual field is normal, the object should become visible to both of you at the same time. Test visual fields yes. from all directions and test yes. each eye separately. Yes. Yes. Many examiners also assess the optic disc by fundoscopy. This panoptic ophthalmoscope shows more of the retina than a conventional ophthalmoscope. Look at the pupils and estimate the size of each, which should be the same or very close. Test direct pupillary response by shining a light into each eye and looking for pupillary constriction. Also look for consensual response by seeing if each pupil constricts when you shine light into the opposite eye. You can also compare the direct and consensual response by moving the light back and forth from one eye to the other, the swinging flashlight test. If one eye has less light perception than the other, the consensual response in the affected eye is stronger than the direct response. Thus, when the light is shined back on the affected eye, it paradoxically appears to dilate. Test extraocular muscles to help assess cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. First, test binocular ocular motility by having the patient follow your finger with her eyes while holding her head still. You may need to hold the patient's chin to keep her head still. Move your finger in all directions, for example by drawing a rectangle over the letter H. Brief mild nystagmus at the extremes of gaze is normal. Also test motility of each eye individually by having the patient cover the other eye. To screen for strabismus, which is particularly important in children, do the cover-uncover test. Have the patient stare at your nose while you cover first one eye and then the other. With strabismus, an eye may change position when one eye is covered or uncovered. To test the fifth cranial nerve, first test sensation of its three branches, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Stretch a wisp of cotton from the end of a cotton-tipped applicator and gently touch the cornea to elicit the corneal reflex. Then have the patient close her eyes and indicate where you touch her with the cotton applicator. Include forehead, cheek, and chin bilaterally. Ask the patient whether the same stimulus feels the same on both sides. They're equal. Equal. Test cold sensation using the metal tuning fork. Equal. Test motor function of the fifth cranial nerve by assessing strength of the muscles of mastication. Try to resist the patient's effort to open the jaw and to close the jaw. Have the patient tighten her jaw muscles and then palpate the temporalis and masseter muscles for bulk and strength. You can also try to force the mandible to one side as the patient resists you. 
testing the pterygoid muscles. Test for a jaw jerk reflex, an indicator of upper motor dysfunction affecting the fifth cranial nerve, by putting your finger on the patient's chin with her jaw open. Then tap your finger with a reflex hammer. Test motor function of the seventh cranial nerve. First, have the patient raise her eyebrows as far as possible. Then have her close her eyes as tightly as possible and try to pull them open. Inspect the face and nasolabial folds for symmetry. Try to deflate the patient's puffed up cheeks. Have the patient jut out her chin or show her lower teeth and inspect the platysma muscle for contraction. Test the auditory function of the eighth nerve by assessing hearing. Make a distracting sound by, for example, rubbing your fingers next to one ear. Then, whisper something in the opposite ear or somewhere away from the distracted ear while covering your 56. mouth and ask the patient to repeat it. If hearing is abnormal, differentiate between conductive and sensory neural hearing loss using the Rene and Weber tests. The Rene test compares sound conduction through bone and air. Strike the head of the tuning fork against your hand. Place the tuning fork base on the mastoid to test bone conduction. Ask the patient to tell you when the sound is no longer audible. It stopped. Then immediately place the still vibrating tuning fork one to two centimeters from the ear on that side to test air conduction. The vibration should still be audible unless conductive hearing is lost. Ask the patient to tell you when the sound is no longer audible. This shows the distance between the tuning fork and the ear when testing air conduction. The Weber test compares bone-conducted sound between the right and left side. Place a vibrating tuning fork in the middle of the forehead and ask the patient whether the sound is louder on one side. If the sound is louder on one side, either that side has conductive hearing loss or the other side has sensory neural hearing loss. If patients have vertigo, Test vestibular function of the eighth cranial nerve by doing the Dix Hallpike maneuver, sometimes called the nylon barony or the barony maneuver. Position the patient sitting so that when she lies down, her head, but not her neck, will extend over the end of the stretcher. Have her turn her head about 45 degrees to the side. If the patient knows that rotation to one side causes symptoms, have her turn the other way first. Then rapidly lower the patient onto her back while supporting her head. Have her keep her eyes open. Note that her head is rotated and slightly lower than the plane of the stretcher. Observe the eyes for nystagmus for 30 to 60 seconds. Sit the patient up and repeat this maneuver with her head rotated in the opposite direction. If patients have acute vertigo, test the vestibulo-ocular reflex using the head impulse test. This test helps differentiate peripheral vertigo, for example from vestibular neuritis, from central vertigo such as from an acute cerebellar stroke. Have the patient stare at an object straight ahead while you rapidly move her head to one side or the other. Normally, there are no saccades at the end of head movement. The presence of saccades suggests, but does not prove, a peripheral problem. Test combined function of the ninth and 10th cranial nerves by observing whether the palate elevates normally and symmetrically. Have the patient make a sound such as E or ah. Test the 11th cranial nerve by assessing strength of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. For trapezius testing, have the patient shrug her shoulders against resistance of your hands. Test strength of the sternocleidomastoid by having the patient rotate her head against resistance on each side. Here, the right sternocleidomastoid moves the head to the left. Test the 12th cranial nerve by assessing tongue strength. Have the patient stick her tongue straight out, checking for deviation to one side and, particularly if ALS is a consideration, fasciculations. See how strongly the patient can push the tongue against the cheek while you provide resistance. Test both sides. 